Okay, I'd like to go over moles now, and you've had a little bit of an introduction. You got to see what the book said, and, and you got to see this short video and some explanations. Here you have some notes, uh, and basically the, most of this part of the unit will be around mole conversions, changing it from one unit into another unit. And, and the reason is very simple. We do not tend to measure things in moles, but moles are what the periodic table is based off of, and moles are what chemical equations are based off of. What we measure things in are grams or liters, and so we have to be able to go back and forth between the different units that we measure and the things that we need to use the periodic table. I like to think uh, of chemical equations as, as sort of like recipes. In other words, they tell you what the ingredients are and what you're going to make when you put them together. And in fact, we're going to have a, a lab in, in a couple of weeks, a food lab, in which you're going to actually have to follow a recipe and, and make something and then and bring it in and basically we, we see how it works out. The thing is, in a regular recipe, you know, you're worried about cups or ounces or teaspoons or, or other various things like that. In chemistry, we're dealing in moles. And moles relates basically how many atoms or molecules there might be in the recipe, the chemical equation. Uh, and then we have to convert that into, yeah, but how much am I actually measuring out? How, how much do I need to make this particular reaction take place? So it is just a number. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's a very, very big number. You know, 10 to the 6th is a million. 10 to the 9th is a billion. So, you know, we're past even billion times billion. That's how big this number is. But it is like the word dozen. Dozen means 12. One mole means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And so if we have a mole of donuts, we got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. Just as if we had a dozen donuts, we would have 12 of them. Every mass that's on the periodic table, while those are averages for the, uh, the different elements, and generally we're going to round, so it's, it's pretty much we're going to take the nearest whole number, but those masses are all for one mole of those elements. So when we look um, on the periodic table of hydrogen and we see one gram, well, one gram isn't for one hydrogen atom. In fact, if you look at how much one hydrogen atom is, notice this is to the negative 24. So that's like 23 zeros before we get to that one after the decimal point. Atoms are very, very small. You need a whole bunch of them. That's, that's what they were trying to get across. In fact, even a relatively heavy element, gold, this is how many grams, look at all those zeros, okay, for one million atoms of gold. Sounds like a lot, a million atoms. But in terms of grams, all those zeros, uh, to give you kind of context, one piece of paper is five grams. So a million grams, a million atoms of gold is, is hardly anything at all. But as I said, when we're looking at chemical equations, and we have them balanced. So here, for instance, two in front of the H2, one in front of the O2, and so forth. Those are done in moles. It's really two moles of the H2 plus one mole of the O2 will produce two moles of H2O, of water. That's really what the recipe is for taking hydrogen and oxygen gases and turning them into water. The rest of these notes here, and, and we're going to do some practicing of this so you get the idea, is basically how do we change it from something that we can measure. Specifically, we're going to look at grams first. Periodic table is, is done pretty much in grams. When we look at the masses, that's how many grams for a particular element. And you know we're going to go grams to moles, and basically, that's a divide problem. 
Okay, in other words, if we've been told how many grams we have and we want to know how many moles that is, because again, the actual equation is done in moles, I'm always going to do a divide. On the other hand, if I've been told the number of moles and I want to know how many grams that is, that is always a multiply problem. And so essentially, a lot of these problems start off as just one-step problems. We're either going to do a division to find out what uh, the moles are, or we're going to do a multiplication because we've already got the moles and we want to know, for instance, how many grams that is. And so you'll see that this basic idea, dividing to find moles or multiplying to find something else, will be true. First, we'll start off with grams and then we'll repeat it for liters. Uh, volume tends to be for gases. And then we'll repeat it for if we actually wanted to know how many atoms or molecules were involved. And so as an example here, how many moles are in 108 grams of H2O? So we know the amount of grams, 108. We would look up the masses for hydrogen and oxygen on the periodic table. In other words, what's the formula mass for H2O? And we would see, oh, well, you know, hydrogen, that's one gram. We don't need the, uh, the decimal part, 1.008 for hydrogen. We'll just call it one. There's two of those. There's one oxygen. And again, we're just rounding off to 16. So the formula mass for H2O is 18 grams. So we need our periodic table all the time for, for a good long while here. And so all I have to do is take that 108 grams, divide it by the 18 grams, and I will have my six moles. So there are six moles of water in 108 grams of water. And so that is basically the, the kind of idea that we're going through here. And then a second example, Suppose we know the moles, and we want to know how many grams that is. Uh, in this case, uh, I've chosen calcium phosphide, and we know that there are four moles of calcium phosphide. So how many grams is that? And again, we would start with, we go to the periodic table. Okay, what's the for formula mass of calcium phosphide? Well, I have three calciums. Each calcium is 40. And then two phosphorus. So 231's there, put that all together, I have my 182. So four moles times, uh, well, I don't know why that says 173, but it should be 182 would give me my correct answer. So let's see, four times 182 gives us 728. So that part's right, for some reason this, is, this should be 182 here. So in, in doing that, we get the amount of grams that are in that. So these two papers, there's no work for you to do. It's just examples and notes of all the mole conversions uh, that we'll be doing. So let's now shift to this page. And again, to illustrate that a mole is just a number, if I have a pair of pencils, how many pencils? Two. Two pencils. If I have a dozen donuts, how many donuts? Twelve. If I have a deck of cards, how many cards is that? Fifty-two. Okay, we have words that mean certain numbers. Anybody know what gross is? Twenty. Actually, a gross is a dozen dozens. One forty-four. Twelve times twelve. A gross is basically a dozen dozen. Now, on the other hand, for a mole, if I have a mole of pencils, I have six point zero two times ten to the twenty-third pencils. If I have a mole of donuts, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The word mole, that's what it's going to be every time. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd.
Now, of course, in real life, when we're making actual measurements, we're not going to end up with whole moles all the time. We'll have half a mole or a tenth of a mole or five moles, depending on the substance. And in fact, we'll do a, a little lab uh, at the second half of the period so we can see just how much a mole is uh, approximately of certain household items. Okay, dozen pieces of paper, of course, are 12 pieces of paper, but here is if one piece of paper has a mass of five, what would be a dozen pieces of paper? What would be the mass of a dozen? 60, right, and how did you get the 60? You multiplied, that's right. You multiplied, you took your 12, and basically we took our 12 pieces and we went five grams per piece and we got our 60 grams. And you note the way I wrote this down, very similar to at the beginning of the year when we were doing conversions, say, between feet and inches or miles and kilometers or even pounds and ounces. That same kind of idea. Well, what about one mole of pieces of paper? How much would that be? Going to do the same thing. We're going to take our 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, because that's what one mole is. All right, so, and I'll just put a little PC for the pieces. And then again, times my five grams per one piece. And, you know, on the calculator, 6.02 and 23rd times my five, and it ends up being 3.01 times 10 to the 24th grams. And so there we have how many grams would be one mole of pieces of paper. And of course, like I said, that's to the 24th. So a billion is 10 to the uh, ninth, trillion is 10 to the 12th. So this is more like 10, a trillion times a trillion grams. So it's, that's, that's quite a bit. Now let's do some things that we would get off the periodic table. And so let's pause for just a moment, get out a periodic table, it doesn't matter whether it's marked on or not, but you, you're gonna need a periodic table all the time for this unit. So get out a periodic table. Now, uh, again, just to give you uh, an idea, if I have one atom of hydrogen, that's what I want to know, the mass of one, one atom. Now, this 1.00 grams, that's for a mole, okay? So if I want to know what just one atom is, you know, one atom is going to be that, and you know, let's just call it one gram, that's close enough. And then I'm going to have to divide it by that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And it turns out that that is 1.66 times 10. I think I did it backwards. When you use your calculator, one of the mistakes you can make on it, and I just did it by accident, is you have to make sure that when you're using scientific notation, which is writing this out like this, that's scientific notation. If you do not put this in parentheses, what happens is it'll do one divided by the six, and then it'll multiply it times 10 to the 23rd. You have to instead put this inside parentheses if you want to do a problem like this. Otherwise, this part will not come out correctly. So again, just a little warning. When you are doing any kind of division with uh, scientific notation, make sure that you put the scientific notation part inside parentheses. Otherwise, what happens is uh, my calculator first said 1.66 times 10 to the 22nd, positive 22nd because what it did is it took one divided by six, which is 0.16, and then went times 10 to the 23rd. What you want to make sure is I'm actually dividing the, by the whole amount. So that 
is how much one atom of hydrogen is. So this is very, very tiny. That's 23 zeros before I actually got to the 166. So a very, very tiny amount. Takes a multitude of atoms before I finally add up to even like a piece of paper. Now, likewise, if I wanted to know one molecule of H2, it's H2, so that the only difference is now it's two grams divided by the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which of course is just this answer times two because I now have two atoms in a molecule of H2. That's what the two says, it says two hydrogens. And so all I have to do is double that, and in doing so, I end up basically with 3.3 times 10 to the minus 24 grams for a molecule. So that just gives you a feel for, for how small molecules are and how small atoms are. Again, negative means less than one, the, this actual number would be like all these zeros. And again, 23 of them, 23 zeros, before we finally got to the 3-3. Three, three. So very, very tiny. All right. Now, in general, we don't worry about one atom or two atoms or even a molecule. We're, we're going to worry about moles of these things. So. If one mole of hydrogen is one gram and one mole of oxygen is 16, all right, so how many grams and one mole of H2? Two grams. Again, because if each hydrogen is one and I have two in H2, then it's two grams. Likewise, if one mole of oxygen, this is off the periodic table, I look at it, I see its mass, the bigger number is 16. If one oxygen is 16, then two oxygens, 32. And please note, this is not 32 molecule, or excuse me, this is not 32 molecules or, or something like that. It's one mole, so it's 6.02. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so anytime we say the word mole, it's that many molecules or that many atoms. Whereas that, that was the purpose of 11 and 12. One atom, one molecule is hardly anything at all. I got to have a mole of them to add up to, to things we could actually measure. So always, one mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, one mole of H2O. We just, we just looked at that on the other paper. Okay, two hydrogens plus one oxygen, and so that's 18 grams. And again, that was one plus one plus 16. And then if I want three and a half moles of water molecules, then that's simply three and a half moles times, well, there's 18 in one mole and so there is my basic conversion. Three and a half times the 18, and I have 63 grams. So 63 grams. And please note this, this step here. Every time I know the moles, this is basically going to be a multiply problem because notice the denominator here was one. So it's three and a half times 18 divided by one. It's always going to be a multiply problem. 17, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction, okay? I have got 90 grams, and I wanna know how many moles is that. So now I'm, I'm going to flip it around and put the 90 grams first. Now the one mole goes on top, and the 18 grams, because we're still dealing with water, goes on the bottom. And so I say this is essentially a divide problem because I'm going to take 90 divided by the 18 and it turns out this is five moles. Well, what about nine grams of water? Well, that would be the same thing. Nine grams times one mole per 18 grams, we have nine divided by the 18, we have a half a mole. So 
So that's the idea for finding out how many moles when we have grams or how many grams when we have moles. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to go ahead and try these four. You've got 222 grams of calcium hydroxide. Then you have 15 grams of acetic acid. Turn those into moles. And so the first thing you got to do is, well, what is the mass of that thing? How do you find that out? You look it up on the periodic table. So for calcium hydroxide, it's basically a calcium, okay? Plus, it's gonna have two oxygens and two hydrogens, because with that two outside the parenthesis, that means everything on the inside is doubled. So OH, I have to have two of each one. So I, that's what I have to add up to find out the mass of calcium hydroxide. Likewise, in acetic acid, HC2H3O2, I've got four hydrogens and two carbons and two oxygens that I have to add up in order to find out what the mass is. Without that mass, I can't do the divide. Again, notice that both of these were divides. I can't do the divide. So you go ahead and do 19 through 22. See what you can come up with for those. Take a look at 15 to 18 to see how those went, and then you try 19 to 22.
All right, so let's, let's take a look at how we would do these problems. So let's start off first with 19. Now, the basic idea is this, is this is the math part I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do 222 grams times one mole, and then I need whatever is the mass of the CaOH2 down here. And so this is basically a divide problem because it's going to end up with 222 two, two divided by this. Well, CaOH2, and again, if I look at my periodic table, okay, Ca, the mass is 40. We can go ahead and round that off. We've already got, so that's parts 40. The oxygen, Okay, well that's 16 and one for hydrogen. There's two of them. So basically we're talking about 40 plus 34 or 74. So it's 74 is what we're going to be dividing by. So 222 times one mole the grams will cancel out and I'll be left with basically three moles. So this first one is three moles. This is what I consider showing your work on doing a mole conversion problem. I have what I started with, I have the conversion in this case from grams to moles and then I have my answer. Please understand in all the papers that we'll be doing for quite a while if you do not show how you got the answer you will not get full credit for the assignment. You need to show this work. And that will become more obvious as we go along to the bottom of the paper because we're not going to always be in grams or moles for that matter. Alright, next one that we're going to look at is we have 15 grams of acetic acid, HC2H3O2. Well, that when I look it up on the periodic table in one mole of acetic acid there are 60 grams. Okay, four from the hydrogens, I have four hydrogens so that's four, 24 from the two carbons and 32 from the two oxygens. That gives me 60 so in that case 15 divided by 60 will give me 0.25 moles. So for number 20 it was 0.25 moles. And again, this is what I mean by showing my work. Where I started and changing it into the moles, the grams of course gets canceled out. So essentially both 19 and 20 were what I call divide problems because the top was 1. So 15 times 1 and then divide by 60. So it's really just a divide problem. Same thing with 19. That was 222 divided by the 74. Every time we start in grams and want to go to moles, it's going to be a divide. Now, 21, we are starting in moles. So now the problem will be 
0.75 moles times so many grams per one mole. So we're doing the opposite now for 21. Well, what is CO2? And of course CO2, the carbon, that's 12. The two oxygens, that's another 32. So together, for one mole of CO2, that's 44 grams. So that becomes my problem now, 0.75 moles times 44 grams per mole. Now it's the moles that get canceled and our, my answer is 33 grams. And then number 22, we have 4.5 moles times, and again, use my periodic table, I have TI3N4. Well, TI, we can call that 48, that's fine. I mean, if you want the decimal places, that's not a problem, but we can round that off to 48 for the TIs. We have three TIs, so three times the 48, that part is 144. We have four nitrogens. Nitrogen, of course, is the mass is 14, so 14 times four, that's another 56. So altogether, that's 200 grams for one mole of Ti3N4, 200 grams. So the moles will cancel and I will be left with 900 grams of Ti3N4. So anytime I'm dealing in mass, in grams, I have to go back to the periodic table, add up the different pieces for the molecule, get its molar mass, we call it molar mass because it's the mass of one mole of whatever that substance is. We would call it atomic mass if we were just talking about a single element, but we call it molar mass when we're talking about a molecule, for instance, or uh, a, an ionic compound, we'd still talk about it as being a molar mass, the mass of one mole. Got to go to the periodic table. It's going to be different for every single compound. So we got to go back to the periodic table every time we do a problem. Now, then we have a second problem. 23 to 26 here. These are not mass. These are liters. Okay, we tend to measure volume of gases in liters, or we, we could do milliliters, but we're going to use liters. Well, it turns out it's actually a simpler problem. It's a simpler problem because the number we're going to use is 22.4 for every single gas. We do not go to the periodic table. We don't have to look up anything. I don't care what actual gas it is. I'm going to use 22.4. And simply put, if it's like 23 and 24, where it says how many moles, okay, then I'm going to take my starting point, 67.2 liters, and then it's going to be one mole over 22.4 liters, like that. It's going to be a divide problem. Notice when we were doing grams and it was how many moles, it was a divide problem, but I'd have to look it up. When it's a liter, a volume problem, I don't have to look it up. It's going to be 22.4. So it's 67.2 divided by 22.4, and we come out with, it's three moles. Likewise. 11.2 liters times one mole over 22.4 liters. I don't care that 23 was chlorine gas and this is methane gas. It's a gas. It's going to be 22.4. And so 11 divided by the 22, this one comes out to be half a mole.
So note, it's a divide problem with how many moles? Now, 25 and 26 say how many liters? Well, it's going to be just the opposite. I'm going to start off with my moles. So for instance, two and a half moles of N2 gas. And now it's going to be the 22.4 over the one mole. which is 56 liters. Or 26 with its 0.25 moles, so I start with the 0.25 moles times the 22.4 over one mole, and we get 5.6 liters. Similar to what we did at the beginning of the year, notice how these are always set up. When I started with liters, I had to have liters down here so that the liters would cancel out and I'd have moles. When I have moles to begin with, then the moles have to be down there. So it's the moles that get canceled out. Same thing that up above, when I started in grams, the grams had to be in the denominator so that the grams would get canceled out. Or, if I started in moles, then the moles had to be in the denominator, so the moles would get canceled out. So, whatever I start with, liters, moles, grams, that tells me what has to be in the denominator for the conversion factor. But the nice thing is I had four different gases here. Didn't matter. It's 22.4 every single time. Four gases. Now, if the question is, what if I want to know how many molecules are in a certain number of grams? Well, let me back up one step. Let's suppose that instead of uh, 25 and 26, instead of them being how many liters, suppose these were how many molecules? The only thing that would have been different is instead of using 22.4, I would have used 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd because that's the mole number. So molecules and liters are done exactly the same way. It's just that liters is 22.4, molecules it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So those would be exactly the same kind of problems. Likewise, if I had said how many moles of chlorine gas are in 3 times 10 to the 24th molecules, then down here would have been that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd number. Now, sometimes what we want to do is all the way through this paper, we've either said how many moles or we told you how many moles. Well, if we look at these last four Note, moles doesn't show up anywhere in those problems. 27, how many molecules are in 60 grams? Or 29, how many grams are in so many molecules? Word moles is not there at all. It's a very simple idea. When you do not see the word moles in the problem, that means you're going to do two steps. And your first step is going to be a divide and your second step is going to be a multiply. The divide is going to get us to moles. And then the multiply part is going to get us to what we want. It's always going to be those two steps. So, for example, 27. How many molecules are in C2H6 are in 60 grams of C2H6? All right. Where what do I what do I actually know? I know I got 60 grams. Okay? My first step is turn that into moles. Okay? So that's going to be 1 mole over well, I have to look up C2H6. Okay, well, 
C2H6, two carbons, that's 24, plus six hydrogens, so that's 30. So there's my problem, 60 grams, the gram parts will cancel, and I'm gonna end up with two moles. So that's my first step. And notice it was a divide. I took the 60 and divided by 30 to get my two moles. Okay, but the problem doesn't want to know moles. It wants to know molecules. And no, moles is not short for molecules. Okay, moles refers to periodic table, masses of all the different elements, put them together, you have compounds. That's not molecules. Okay, what do I do now? Now I'm going to do a multiply for my step two. I'm going to take my two moles and I want to turn this into molecules. Well, the mole number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd per one mole. Notice how I have moles here, moles there. Moles get canceled out. And when I multiply this, I get 1.204 times 10 to the 24th molecules and I should write molecules in there. That many molecules are in two moles. Or specifically, that many molecules are in 60 grams. So anytime I have a problem that does not actually have the word moles in the question, I, it either is not part of what I already know, or it's not what I want to find out, it's going to take two steps. So 60 grams divided by the 30 gave me the two moles, and then the two moles times the 6.02. It's always going to be the 6.02 number when I'm talking about atoms, molecules, formula units, which is what the book uses for ionic compounds. Same thing for 28. Okay, first step. I've got to go from my 980 grams got to look up H3PO4 okay I got three hydrogen so that's three phosphorus one phosphorus so that's 31 plus four oxygens that's 64, 4 times 16 is 64. Put that all together, I got 98. So one mole of H3PO4, that's one mole. So down here goes the 98. Grams will get canceled. I end up with 10 moles. And then my second step, Again, we're going to find out how many molecules of H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid. I'm going to take my 10 moles times the mole number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Sometimes we will make the math a little easier and just call it 6 times 10 to the 23rd. We won't worry about the 0.02 part, but it's still, that's our mole number per one mole. So now it's the moles that get canceled, and I get, and here's the nice thing, 10 just means now it's to the 24th. And again, mole is not short for molecules. You got to write out the whole word molecules when you have these kind. Okay. 29 and 30 go in the opposite direction. We want to know how many grams are in that many molecules. So these will start off Now the mole is on top, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd goes on the bottom, so it's the 
mole number now that's molecules that's getting canceled out and it turns out this is two and a half moles Now that you want to make sure that you can actually do that step on your calculator okay and that you're that you ended up with two and a half moles I might also point out okay you know when we're just doing stuff like this in class not a problem using your phone as your calculator quiz or test don't get to use your phone so make sure that you have a calculator. I mean, yes, I have a few, but I don't have an entire class set, so I'd hate to run out and you're sitting there trying to do things by hand instead of just having uh, a simple calculator to do it for you. Now, that's the moles. I don't want to know moles for 28, or uh, excuse me, for 29. I want to know grams. So that was, that was my first step, my second step. It's now I'm going to take that two and a half moles and I need how many grams of NaCl are in one mole. So uh, I can look at, again, my periodic table. Here's Na. I can call that 23. Cl, I could call that 35. So 23 plus 35, that's 58. So 58 grams per mole. And again, if you want more digits, more decimal places, that's fine. So two and a half times the 58, and I get 145 grams. So two steps to start from molecules and end up in grams. Now, 30 wants how many liters? Okay. Well, my first part is going to be pretty much the same thing. Step 1, 1.505 times 10 to the 23rd molecules times 1 mole per 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Molecules get canceled, and I'm going to end up with, this is 0.25 moles. Yes? We will. This is the same first step, though, because I got to get from the molecules to the moles. Now that I have that, it says how many liters? 29 said how many grams? So I had to go to the periodic table and look up Na and Cl to get the 58. Here, this is liters. So for my step two, it's going to be that 0.25 moles times 22.4 liters per mole. So yes, you are correct. I got to use the 22.4 because I wanted liters as my answer and I get 5.6 liters. So two steps when I don't have the word mole. The first step went to moles, so I needed to use whatever number I needed to get to moles. So if I have molecules, then I got to use the molecule, the mole number. If I have liters, I have to use the 22.4. If I have grams, I have to look it up.
this is why, if we go back to your notes now, this is why there are two pages here. We went down here to where everything was in grams. Okay, the bottom here, note liters to moles, moles to liters. So there's the 22.4 number. And then on the second page, there is an example of doing the molecules to moles and moles to molecules. And then the very end is, you know, what if I want to go, say, from grams to liters? And again, two steps. First step to moles, which meant I need to look it up on the periodic table and add things together. Use the formula mass. And the first step is always a divide. I needed to take whatever grams I had and divide by the formula mass. And then because I wanted liters in that second step, 22.4 is what I wanted to use. Question? Okay, so this kind of gives you an example of everything that we're doing laid out in words. So take this as notes and then also use this as, as some example notes as we've gone through each one of those. And, you know, whether it's one step or two steps, again, I'm going to be looking for you to show me this when you're showing me your work. Okay, now, just to give you an idea of where we're going, this is the beginning of the unit, doing mole conversions. Okay, where we're actually going, and the entire unit is called stoichiometry, where we're actually going is, we want to be able to take one of those chemical recipes and say, hey, if I have a certain number of liters of this, you know, how many grams of that am I going to make? And the mole conversion is one part of that process. There are actually a couple of steps in order to get to that, but that's where we want to get to, is we want to be able to know how much do we actually need physically to measure out. Then we're going to come back to our equation, because our equation tells us how to put it together just the way a regular recipe. I mean, you know, you may have a gallon of milk and a dozen eggs in the refrigerator, but the recipe says, you know, but I need, you know, one quart of the milk and I need three eggs. And so that's what you've got to actually use. It's just in chemistry, it's always got to be turned into moles. And so that's why we went through all those, well, what if we have grams? How many moles of that is? What if we have liters? How many moles? What if we know molecules or atoms? How many moles? So that we can then do this, use the recipe. And then finally, we may want to know as our answer how many moles of water were produced or how many liters of water were produced or how many grams of water were produced, kind of just depending on the problem. So basically, I like to think of this as there's three types of problems grams, liters, or molecules. But essentially, it always comes down to the same thing. If I want to know moles, I'm going to divide. And if I've been told the moles, then I'm going to multiply. And then finally, if moles isn't there at all, I got to do them both. I'm going to divide first to get the moles, and then I'm going to multiply for whatever it is I want. All right. 